Hello guys and welcome back to a festive computer related video. It's nearly Christmas and I think it's time we should look at a gift of a computer I picked up recently from Electronic Recycling Australia, a local e-waste recycler. They're one of South Australia's leading e-waste recyclers and they help and provide people with disabilities ongoing employment. So let's take a look at this cash converters budget line computer. A quick recap from my last video. Amongst a lot of old computers I received was this machine, which at some point had been sold at cash converters under their budget line. There is next to no information on the brand Meldtech online, however a viewer of mine said he bought a 386 PC from them back in 1992. This machine also had a handwritten note saying the CPU was unworkable. At the time I wasn't sure what that meant. But upon opening the case, it became apparent what the problem may have been. All of the cards had been pulled out of their slots. This may have happened due to the case not being screwed on though. Overall, there is no rust, and when it was sold at cash converters, opening the case would void the warranty. Boy, they were really ahead of their time in that regard. The machine does have a CD drive and looks to be complete with a hard disk. So I fired it up to find it had a 150 megahertz Pentium processor and only 16 megabytes of RAM, the minimum required to run Windows 98. But it looks like there may be some bad sectors on the hard disk as some files are missing during startup. I tried a few commands to see whether most of the files were visible on the drive but this did not seem to help. I rebooted the machine, and to get into the BIOS I pressed the delete key. I wanted to see exactly how big the hard disk was. It was detected as being only 2 gigabytes, and while that drive may end up needing replacing, let's try installing Windows 98 using my totally legit CD. This didn't actually require me to first insert a boot floppy disk, and it loaded straight away, and a short time later I was in the setup, and was able to input all the information. One hurdle was going through and detecting all the bad sectors. It turns out that there were quite a few of them. Well, over a hundred in fact. This wasn't really a problem. I just had to hang around the computer and click the enter key every single time. What's that extra B for? That's a typo. And after a blue screen or two later, it was running Windows 98 once again. That intro sound always feels so fresh, even after 23 years. This funky groove also plays on the first startup, telling you all about the newfangled thing called the internet and how to make your computer run faster. I'd probably suggest not using a failing hard disk. Because this hard disk still had the previous user's documents intact, I thought I would look at some of the cool MS Paint art made nearly 20 years ago. It's crazy to think so much of this digital art has been lost over the decades. And after making this video, I will be wiping the hard disk, but I thought I'd back up this artwork since it would be a shame to see it lost to time. And of course, there are a number of memorable screensavers included in Windows 98, such as the graphically impressive 3D flower box, the Windows flag, and if I saw this up a flagpole, I'd definitely salute to it, and the also nostalgic 3D maze. But do you know what just showed up at my door? This cool framed original iPhone from XRE Art. And here's a bit of satisfying peeling action for you. Honestly, this thing is so cool and I can't wait to find a place to hang it on a wall. And if you want to get one of these or a similar one, there is an affiliate link in the description. My channel gets a small kickback from each sale, so that is much appreciated. So let's tear this mess of a computer down and see what's inside. There were no case screws holding the outer casing on, which is probably why the structural integrity was very compromised. The S3 Trio Verge graphics card appears to have the maximum amount of RAM chips possible, totaling 4 megabytes if my research is correct. And while it's not super dusty inside, there are a few dust bunnies hiding in here. And this is one of the old power supplies that has the on switch hardwired to it, which is why this message is displayed during shutdown. And before I pulled out the drive ribbon cables, I was sure to mark which ones went where. The reason I did this was because it is possible to put these cables upside down. And the 2GB hard drive in here was made in July of 1997, just over a year after I was born in fact. And most of the components in here are dated around late 96 to mid-1997, leading me to believe this system was definitely sold sometime during 1997. And using this Socket 7 motherboard, it is possible to upgrade beyond a 150MHz chip that's in here. But for the sake of running this in the configuration I believe it originally came with, I'll be leaving all the existing parts as they are. That includes the only 16 megabytes of EDO memory, which is actually the minimum needed to run Windows 98 according to Microsoft. 
The capacitors on this board look pretty good, and I must say these Socket 7 boards are definitely becoming quite collectible. So hang on to one if you've still got it. In fact, this one's still keeping the time, so I believe someone has replaced the CR2032 BIOS battery as well. And off comes the front bezel. This is somewhat yellowed, and I'll be attempting to whiten it using hydrogen peroxide. Some plastics glue will be required as one of the mounting screws has sheared off sadly, and there's still a bit of metal that wasn't shaven off when the chassis was originally made. I'll be leaving this front light panel aside so we can actually see a good before and after the whitening. The case of course got a good clean off beforehand, and I used some sticker remover to also get off any gunk that had built up. Since the floppy disk cover was also looking surprisingly yellowed, I took it off and will also be applying hydrogen peroxide. The CD drive didn't look as bad, and I'm pretty sure the front was kind of beige to begin with, when compared to photos I saw online. To begin whitening the plastic, I sprayed on some Ajax spray and wipe and let it sit for a bit, then blasted the surfaces clean with water. It's summer here in Australia and the UV rating is high, a really an ideal time to be doing this, and my new method is brushing on 40 volt 12% salon hydrogen peroxide, and I'll be reapplying coats throughout the day. Even just 1.5 hours later there is a noticeable difference in whiteness. Let's keep it up and see what it ends up like later in the video. Back inside I began dusting out the casing, which wasn't too bad after nearly 24 years, and after a bit of fiddling I did realise how to remove the motherboard. It required taking out a piece of plastic and sliding it upwards. Good thing I removed it as there was a bit of dust underneath that I couldn't reach before. And while this drive is failing and there are numerous bad sectors, it's still fun to mess around with and see what it can still do. Oh, hi there Spidey, you look like you're a long way from home. Yeah, I wasn't expecting to see that in here, so I placed it outside, and good luck little dude. I also made sure to clean out the single fan. It's crazy to think this is all you needed to cool the processor back then. While I am going to clean it up, I really do want to preserve the original cash converter's branding, as I think that's a pretty cool bit of history. But anyway, let's use a healthy dose of eucalyptus soil and clean it up. That handwritten note is definitely coming off though, and the very old tape is starting to turn to dust. But wow, the other side is an original cash converter's receipt, and at the time they were apparently the single biggest second-hand retailer in the world. And here's an offer to receive a free CD, or videotape in fact. And yeah, they're apparently pretty urgent for TVs and VCR players. This must be really old. To get rid of that residual gunk, I let some sticker remover soak in for a few minutes, and a bit of eucalyptus oil helped to remove the last few spots. And to make the casing fit on properly, I used some pliers to bend the casing back into shape. The front bezel had been sitting outside for long enough, and I applied some spray and wipe and blasted everything with water. The plastics are pretty evenly widened and look far better than the plastics did originally. Remember that this yellowed piece matched the rest of the casing perfectly before, making for a good before and after example. And to remove gunk built up on the feet, it only took a wipe with some Ajax. And to ensure a strong bond between the broken plastics, I first primed the surface, and after waiting a minute, I applied the glue and let it sit for some time. The motherboard was surprisingly not held in with screws, but I did manage to slide it back correctly. And that front bezel is a big improvement from how it was before. And I'll leave that yellowed section there so I can see if the whitening is permanent or if it eventually changes colour once again. I did my best to manage the cables, but there really isn't enough room in here to do it neatly. But once again, it's a clean system inside with some pretty common hardware for the time period. There's something really special about these seemingly boring old beige computers. They were cheap and affordable even back in the late 90s. This one of course being sold at cash converters for $55 at some point in time. Since it is nearly Christmas, why don't we try playing some Christmas related games on this ancient machine? One popular freeware title is Xmas Lemmings. This was distributed during the holiday season in 1991, and I really enjoy blowing them all up. I did kind of run out of time to copy over other Christmas games, but here's another mid-90s staple called Hover. This 3D flag collecting game actually came bundled on the Windows 95 installer disc. A slightly less child friendly game I tried was Carmageddon. You race your car around trying to cause as much mayhem as possible, and it definitely runs fine on this system. And how could we end a retro computer video without drawing something in MS Paint? I really wish I had some of my drawings from decades gone by. I think it's a cool bit of history, and another computer that I'm glad to have in my collection. Thank you very much for watching, I really hope you've enjoyed the video, and I'll be back in the new year with some fresh content on some not so fresh computers. Anyway, big thanks to Electronic Recycling Australia who kindly gave me this computer, 
They have a website of their own and you can use the code in the description to receive a discount off your next purchase. Also, I just realized the, why aren't there any points on the party hat? I thought, the way they rounded now, that's, is that new? When did that start becoming a thing? Anyway, I'll see you in the next year. Have a good one and I hope you have nice time with your family and friends over this holiday season. Thanks for watching. I'll see you then.